Hello and welcome to a short video which will help you get started developing multi-core programs for the Raspberry Pi Pico. We are going to cover the basics of multi-core programming on the Pico and hopefully demonstrate why we would want to use both cores of the RP2040 chip. As always with my videos, a write-up of this tutorial and the project source code is available for my website linked in the video description. I have put timestamps in the description to help you navigate this video if you want to skip certain sections. So let's start by explaining a bit about why, would you, why you would want to use both cores of the Raspberry Pi Pico. All of the code that we have written so far has been executed on a single core and so far this has worked perfectly fine. However, we haven't really been pushing the RP2040 chip that much. In complex projects, you might be asking the microcontroller to perform more challenging tasks, such as heavy calculations. In a single core or thread process, this can heavily bog down the processor and stop the processor being able to uh, handle tasks that you want it to. In a multi-threaded application or a multi-core application, the heavy calculations can be passed to the second core, freeing up the processor to work on the tasks that you want it to do when you want it to. Another example could include one core handling an interface or communication application, like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, whilst the other core handles sensor data acquisition, say temperature data. Obviously, these are simple examples, and I'm sure you can think of many uses for a multi-core system, and you'll probably encounter many uses as you start playing around with the Pico. So, how does it work? I'm going to give you a conceptual overview of the system, of the multi-core system and a bit about how it works. This is a, a bit of an oversimplification, but it will give you the basics so that you can start developing your own projects. In the RP2040, we have two cores, core zero and core one. They both share the same memory or RAM, which they can communicate with. In single core operation, code zero executes all of the code you have written. However, in a multi-core program, Core 0 starts, then in a sense, hands a series of executable functions to Core 1 to process in parallel. In most applications, we will want to communicate between the two cores. This may be in the form of commands or data, for example. And in the case of the RP2040, there are two FIFO bu buffers that can be accessed by the cores. A FIFO buffer is a first in, first out buffer which simply means that the, the first data written to the buffer is the first data that is read. Each buffer can only be written to by one core through a process called pushing and read by the other core by a process called popping. You can see that neither core can write to or read from more than one buffer. This actually makes our life quite straightforward and you'll see why later. When data is written to the buffer by either one of the cores, an interrupt is triggered in the other core to signal that data is waiting for it and tell the interrupt handler to do something with it. Hopefully that gave you the groundwork of how a multi-core microcontroller like the Raspberry Pi Pico operates. Now let's make our own program to put it into practice. I am going to write a multi-core program which uses core zero to read the on-chip temperature sensor on the Pico, then send this result to core one which will print it over the USB serial connection. This is obviously a straightforward program which doesn't necessarily require two cores to accomplish it, but it is an example to get you comfortable with the concept. Okay, so let's start Visual Studio Code from the developer command prompt and create a new project. If you don't know how to do this, the video linked in the cards above will walk you through it. Don't forget to copy across the Pico SDK import file. We then create our CMake lists file and our C file. So, first things first, we need to write our CMake file. I'll run through this quickly. We are going to start with, off with the minimum required version, then include the Pico SDK import file. Then we initialize the SDK and add our executable. Now, in terms of the target link libraries, we need to add the Pico standard library and Pico multicore 
as well as the hardware ADC for the temperature sensor. Enable the USB serial output and finally add the extra outputs to the build, uh, build files. As a reminder, the source code is in the description and I have covered how to set up CMake list file in a previous video. Save and close this and configure the tasks from the terminal menu. Now onto our C file. We need to include the following header files, stdio, pico standard libraries, pico multicore, hardware interrupts and hardware ADC. Now we are going to use three functions in our code today. Firstly, we are going to create an interrupt handler for when core one has data to read. We're going to call this core one interrupt handler. Then we need to create a function which will actually run on core one. You can think of this as the main function which will run on core one. We will stick with the Raspberry Pi documentation and call this function core one entry. Finally, we create our standard main function which will run the code on core zero. Let's start with our main function. The first thing we're going to need to do is initialize the STDIO for the serial output over USB. We do this with the STDIO init all function. Then we need to tell core one to execute the function that we just defined. We do this with the multicore launch core one function, whose argument is the core one entry function. Now we need to initialize the analog to digital converter to get the internal temperature measurement. We use the functions ADC init, then ADC set temp sensor enabled with the argument true. And finally, we set the ADC input to the fourth ADC module using the ADC select input function. And lastly, in the main function and inside an infinite while loop, we need to read the analog input into an unsigned 16-bit integer. Then we send it into the FIFO buffer using the multicore FIFO push blocking function, whose argument is the integer we saved the ADC value into. Then I will add a one second delay. Okay, so now we are going to write the code that will be executed on core one. We need to configure the interrupts, which when triggered, will print the temperature value over the USB serial interface. We first clear the interrupt using the multicore FIFO clear IRQ function. Then we set the handler function, which will run when the interrupt is signaled. We use the IRQ set exclusive handler function with the arguments of the interrupt signal that will fire, which is the SIO IRQ PROC1 interrupt and then our interrupt handler name which we called core one interrupt handler. Now we have to enable that interrupt with the IRQ set enabled function. Finally we create an infinite while loop so this program never terminates. Our final function that we need to write is the interrupt handler which executes each time core zero sends data to the FIFO buffer. So we create a while loop whose condition is the function multicore FIFO R valid, which checks to see if there is data in the buffer. In this while loop, we pop data from the buffer into an unsigned 16 bit integer, and then perform the following conversion logic to turn the output of the ADC into a voltage. We can in turn use this voltage to work out the temperature using the equation in the RP2040 datasheet, specifically the equation on page 575. Then we print the temperature to the serial USB connection with the printf function. Finally, outside of the while loop, we clear the interrupt with the multicore FIFO clear IRQ function, which resets the interrupt to trigger this function the next time data is sent to core one. Okay, so that's our program created. Now we can build the program and you should see it compile without any errors. Find the UF2 file in the build folder and connect your Pico over USB.
simply drag and drop the UF2 file to the Pico and it should reboot. Now open your serial monitor of choice. I use Putty. Find the, Pico, the port that your Pico is connected to and enter the board rate of 115,200 and open the monitor. You should now see the temperature readout from your Pico. The temperature sensor isn't particularly accurate, but you should see it go up and down as I warm up the uh, as I warm up the RP2040. Now, I should note that in this program, I only sent data in one direction, from core 0 to core 1. If I wanted to send data back to core 0, then I'd have to create and configure another interrupt and interrupt handler for core 0 in the exact same way uh, that we did for core 1. I'll do this in a future video, so make sure you are subscribed for that if you're interested. So that was a pretty quick introduction to multi-core programming for the Raspberry Pi Pico. If you would like to learn about more projects which use both cores of the Pico, then please make sure you are subscribed. If this video has helped you, please consider liking. Thank you.